Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kippets. It's Mary, and I'm here with this week's edition of 90 Days and 900 Seconds, The Last Resort Edition, Season 1, Episode 2. And this week, the couples played couple games. And Big Ed is a gnat that deserves to be flicked away. So let's set 900 seconds on the timer so I could jump right in and let's get to it. So this episode started out with Liz straddling Ed on the beach. Where is my eye bleach, guys? They are so proud that they are the number one couple so far. They are so in love. This won't last for long, trust me. Kelly, he is so disappointed that the therapist basically had to force his woman to sit next to him during the couple session. I mean, come on. This is a couple's therapy resort. And Molly didn't want to sit next to him and had to be called called out by the therapist. And Kelly is ex expressing how embarrassed and disappointed he is. Angela, back at her room, is on the phone with Michael and you know she's talking about Kalani and how she felt for her and all I can concentrate on was the bottom of her feet like what in the actual going on here like it seems like the bottom of her feet are always dirty Ugh, I, I can't but she she's talking about Kalani and how she feels for her and she sympathizes with her and etc Kalani is talking to Aswelu and um, she talks about Aswelu was her first, you know, okay? And she decided to sleep with her whole past because she wanted to see what sex would be like with another guy. So she decided, hey, I might as well go for it. And you know something? I don't blame her. Aswelu, on the other hand, this is really sinking in, Okay. Because he only got a blowjob. On the other hand, Kalani went all the way. And he's like, um, he can get you pregnant though. And she's like, so the fuck what? You got a blowjob. Like, give me a break. So eventually she made him leave the room. She was like, I am not doing this. You are leaving. So he packed up his shit and left. She was like, I'll see you in the morning. It's morning time. Jovi and Yara are getting their cardio in. Jovi makes a comment about the cardio they did the night before and the marks that Yara left on his back. Then we have the pool scene between Angela and Molly. And um, Molly was talking about that she doesn't twerk because she doesn't have junk in her trunk. She has more in the front than in the back. So forgive me, guys. I'm going to demonstrate what Molly showed Angela to be her signature dance move. And I'm kind of short, so I'm going to put my camera down. And she did this. Okay, guys. So, yeah. um, That is apparently her version of twerking. And Angela and Molly were in the pool attempting to twerk and uh Angela did kind of look like she was trying to do the worm like Molly said Angela looks like a big glow worm in that bathing suit but that's another story and the Georgia peaches were bonding in the pool talking about how Molly expected Kelly to just swoop in you know just come down to Georgia, swoop in, propose, do the house, do the family thing, just swoop in and take over. And that just hasn't been happening. And um, yeah, she acknowledges that she may have been a little bitchy, not sitting next to him, but you know, she just wasn't feeling it. And you know, you know you're wrong when even Angela is telling you that you didn't give it a fair chance. And Molly, you know, breaks into tears and she's like, I just want to be loved. 
love is a battlefield, you know, love is a battlefield. And Angela's like, you know, Molly, you have to give this a chance. It, you know, it, it, you, you really have to give this a fair chance. Tonight, you have to go into this with an open mind or you're going to look like a true asshole. And you know it's bad when Angela is saying that she feels like Molly is not giving this a fair chance. And that Kelly, you know, seems to be like a nice stand-up guy. And, you know, she's putting Kelly in a bad spot by just coming in with this attitude like she doesn't want to work things out and that maybe she needs to open up her mind a little bit, open up her mind to the process. Now, you know it's bad when Angela's the voice of fucking reason, okay? Someone who has a necklace around their neck that has sex spelled S-E-K-S -S, is the voice of reason. It's pretty bad. So now... We have the couple games. It's a um, obstacle course. One is supposed to guide the other one by just using communication skills. You cannot touch your partner, okay? And you just have to tell them what to do. Kalani is screaming at Aswelu. Left, right, forward, back, you fucking idiot. This way, that way. Okay, their communication skills suck. Jovi and Yara, not too bad, okay? With a cheerleader like Angela, who needs the Dallas, Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders with a cheerleader like Angela? So we also have Michael cheerleading from his trusty spot on Zoom. Okay, next up, Ed and Liz versus Kelly and Molly, okay? Now, Ed, he has to be a schmuck. You know Ed had to be a schmuck, okay? He was cheating. He was cheating, so Kelly and Molly, they took the win. In their minds, they won because Ed could see through his blindfold, okay? Ed was cheating, and he could see through his blindfold, and... Then it was Angela and Jovi, okay? Now, it's pretty sad that Jovi has better communication skills with Angela than with his own wife, okay? Because he completed the course faster than Yara and, I'm sorry, than Jovi and Yara did. So I'm just saying it's kind of bad. So, yay. Jovi and um, Angela won. Yara's standing there like, what the fuck? I can't believe my husband has better communication with Angela than with me. And this is when everyone starts calling Ed out for being a cheater. And Ed calls Kelly a bitch. This is the pivotal point of the episode. Ed calls Kelly a bitch. And Kelly just kind of looks at him. You even see the look on Molly's face here. And it's just like, okay, I'm going to let you have that one. I'm going to let you have that one for now. So now we have the group therapy sessions, okay? And Molly and Kelly, they're the overall winners. Yay. Hug. Their communication skills were fantastic. So based on their overall time, their communication skills. They're the overall winner of the game. Hug. Yay. Great communication skills. Now, in the group therapy session, Yara decides that she has something to tell Joby that she has been keeping from him this whole time. Now, if you guys have been listening to me babble for the past month or so, you would know what that Big secret is, Yara is on birth control. She does not want to have a second child. But Jovi is so insistent on getting her pregnant that Yara decided to get on birth control behind his back. And as you see by the look on Jovi's face, he's like, what the? Because he had no clue. And he feels kind of betrayed. 
because Yara made this decision without telling him. And he's like, I wouldn't intentionally get you pregnant, you know, without having a discussion with you first. And she's like, you know, I sometimes I feel like you would. And um, I just want to protect myself because I'm not ready to have a baby. And he's just like, I can't believe you didn't tell me. Like, this is to me kind of like a betrayal. And she's all teary eyed and like, you know, I just, I, I, I just not ready to have a baby now. And I just decided to take things into my own hands. Now we have Kalani and Aswelu. And Aswelu is just, you know, he's upset. He's upset about this whole situation, how Kalani is still keeping in touch with her hall pass. Seeing her text him is ripping his heart out of his chest because he's there to try to make things work. He really wants to give this a good old college try one more time. But Kalani is texting the other guy and it's not working, you know, and it's really upsetting him. So Kalani decides, you know, I'm not going to text him anymore. I'm going to block the dude and I'm going to give it a good old college try again. So we shall see. A little spoiler. She's still talking to her whole past. They're going to move in together. I think they have moved in together already. So now, the hot tub scene. Yes, this is Ed getting into the hot tub naked. And yes, this is Angela covering her eyes because Ed flashed her. He decided to salute her. His words, not mine. And yes, this is Angela flashing Ed after he decided to flash her. And yes, honestly, this little interaction between Angela and Ed was the highlight of the whole fucking episode. This is Ed's swim shorts outside of the hot tub. This is Kelly and Molly in the hot tub. And this is Kelly's expression once he realized that Ed was naked in the hot tub. So Liz asked Molly, how is it seeing each other after all these months? And Molly started to answer the question. And of course, Ed had to cut her off because Ed has to be the center of attention. Always. Ed has to be the center of attention. He's like that little gnat that just keeps flying in front of your face that you can't get rid of. So annoying. Like a little gnat that stalks you all day long and you're just like, oh, get away from me. What is wrong with you? Like, oh, you keep trying to kill it. That's Ed, okay? Annoying as fuck. So Kelly and Molly both point out that Ed is annoying you know, uh, Molly was answering a question that was asked to her directly by Liz and Ed cut her off. That's annoying. That's rude. Okay. And Kelly jumped to Molly's defense and Molly's pointing out, you know, you're a rude fuck, Ed. So they also point out the one thing you do not do is call a man a bitch. And Ed is like, I'm not afraid of anybody. I will take anybody on. I'm a and a go, but whatever the hell he said he was. I don't even know what he was referring to. Could someone drop me a comment and let me know what the hell Ed was referring to? I think some, some anime character or some shit. Okay. And Kelly is like, yo, he's going to roll into cartwheels if I put my hands on, on, on him. Or is, who is he kidding? Like, who, who is he trying to impress right now? Okay, it is not about who you're afraid of. You just do not call a grown man a bitch, period, unless you are expecting some smoke back. And I give Kelly a lot of credit, okay? Angela took care of it instead. Angela started screaming, shut up. And that's how things ended. That's how things ended. And as we see next week, Angela took care of shutting it up. She started splashing water in his face. And then 
Liz, who was silent the whole time this was happening, except to ask Molly the question, he was pretty quiet in the hot tub, decided, I guess, apparently to find her voice and confront Angela because next thing you know, Angela has gone from happy drunk to crazy, I'm going to rip your head off and have it for a midnight snack drunk. And she is chasing Ed and Liz back to their room. Production is getting in between them. And she is screaming that she will eat an orange bitch. She will beat up, I'm sorry, beat up an orange bitch. So I'm with Kelly. This shit is a hot mess express. I am loving it. I cannot wait to see next week. And um, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you don't already. If you haven't checked out my update and recap of episode one with Kelly, please do. And please share my video with a friend or 10. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you so much, guys. See you next time. Bye.